Is it really safe to be using retinol or retinoid around the eyes? And will using a retinol or retinoid long term put you at risk for chronic dry eyes? We're going to be doing a deep dive into these questions in today's video. But before we do, give this video a thumbs up if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist. And make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on. That way you know as soon as my videos go live. I have many videos on this channel all about topical retinoids, whether it be prescription tretinoin, prescription tazeratine, adapalene, and I also have a lot of videos about over-the-counter cosmetic retinols. So check those out, but these are used not only in the treatment of things like acne, but also for their anti-aging properties. They help reverse sun damage and improve production of collagen, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. The biggest side effect that comes from using these topical retinoids and retinols is dryness, irritation, and peeling of the skin. And this is most common in the first few weeks of using these. With time, however, the skin becomes sort of resistant to these side effects and they subside while the medication takes effect. Now, if you've watched any of my videos on applying topical retinoids or retinols, I often point out a tip to apply a little bit of Vaseline around the eyelids to protect the skin in this area from these ingredients. Why? Well, they can be too irritating there and that can lead to dryness, irritation, and peeling of the delicate eyelid skin, even swelling. However, many people actually use topical retinoids around the eyes with no problem to improve the look of crow's feet and reverse sun damage in this area. The ability to tolerate retinoid in this area really varies depending on the person. But will using a retinol or retinoid impact the health of your eyeball. I'm not talking about the eyelids now, I'm talking about the eyeball. Can it have detrimental effects on your eyes and potentially your vision? We really don't have good data to support the idea that retinoids, whether it be tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene, or retinol applied to the face or even around the eyes leads to chronic dry eyes. However, I'm aware that some optometrists and ophthalmologists may suggest to their patients who have dry eye disease to avoid using their topical retinoids, if not medically necessary, due to the potential, maybe theoretical risk of dry eyes. And we're gonna get into that shortly. But before we get into that, what the heck is dry eye disease anyway? It's actually one of the most prevalent eye disorders. In the US, it's estimated that around 40 million people have dry eye disease. Dry eye disease is related to a deficiency or disruption in the production of the tear film that is necessary for the ocular health. Tears actually consist of three layers. The innermost layer of the tear film is mostly mucin, a substance that is secreted by the epithelial cells of the conjunctival and the cornea. Then you have a middle aqueous layer. Overlying that, you have a lipid layer that is produced by these special glands inside your eyelids called the meibomian glands. So a lot of people, when they're talking about dry eye disease, they specifically question meibomian gland dysfunction. Any disruption or deficiency in tear film production is going to increase shearing forces on the eye that can really compromise the health of your eye. And long-term, if untreated, actually can lead to vision disturbances, even blindness. There are two types of dry eye disease, aqueous deficient, which is due to a problem with production of the aqueous layer from the lacrimal gland, or you have evaporative dry eye disease, which is due to a problem with the meibomian gland and that lipid layer of the tear film. Meibomian gland dysfunction contributes to roughly two thirds of all cases of dry eye disease. What the heck does the meibomian gland have to do with using an anti-aging cream? The meibomian gland is a type of of sebaceous gland. And you have specialized sebaceous glands lining your eyelids, the top and bottom eyelid, called meibomian glands. And similar to how the sebaceous oil glands in your skin make sebum, otherwise known as oil, the meibomian glands, a type of sebaceous gland in your eyelids, make a mixture of protein and lipid referred to as meibum. The concern around using topical retinoids or retinols to the skin, especially around the eyes, is that potentially it could impact those sebaceous glands in the eyelids leading to dysfunction and chronic dry eyes. However, we really don't have good research to show that use of topical retinoids or retinols 
is responsible for my Bohmian gland dysfunction. There are case reports, however, of acne patients using topical retinoids and retinols and developing dry eye disease. It's really hard, however, from these reports to prove causation. There are a lot of really well-established risk factors for my Bohmian gland dysfunction and dry eye disease, which we'll get into in a moment. Now, when we're talking about retinoids that you take by mouth, namely isotretinoin, dry eyes is definitely a side effect. But again, this is a medication that you're taking by mouth and it's going throughout your body to impact oil production, sebum production, and mybum production, so it makes sense. But when applying the low amounts that are applied to the skin, the likelihood that it's going to get inside your eyelid, it seems very unlikely to me. Yes, uh, topical retinoids and retinols can travel, meaning you put them on one half of your face and they may migrate over to the other side of the face. So I suppose, you know, in theory, the risk is there. But as a dermatologist, I've just never come across this as an issue with the prescription topical retinoids or the over-the-counter retinols. I'm not an ophthalmologist, I don't treat dry eye disease, but I do know a little bit about it. And frankly, I think more research is needed into how topical use of retinoids or retinols truly affects the health of the meibomian glands and the risk for dry eye disease. Is it a true risk? Is it a true cause of dry eye disease? Do you wanna know what the number one risk for meibomian gland dysfunction is? Aging. As you get older, you're more likely to experience meibomian gland dysfunction. Between the ages of 20 and 80, you have the number of meibomian glands in your eyelids. There may be some age-related changes in the mixture of lipids and proteins produced by the meibomian glands as well, further contributing to the risk of dry eye disease as it relates to aging. Another risk factor for dry eye disease is being female likely because of hormones. It turns out that the male hormones, the androgens, actually are beneficial for the meibomian glands. They increase meibom production, similar to how they increase sebum production and make acne worse. They increase meibom production and they actually have anti-inflammatory effects on the meibomian glands. Whereas estrogen, the female hormone, is the opposite. It actually decreases meibom production and it increases inflammation. Furthermore, women are a group that has a stronger association with the development of certain autoimmune diseases like Sjogren's syndrome, which likewise can impact the meibomian glands. So that may be why being female is a risk factor as well. When we're talking about the use of topicals, things that you put either to the eyelids, around the eyes, in the eyes, or to the skin, uh, the number one topical that's actually established to be a risk factor for the development of dry eye disease is not actually retinol or retinoid, but rather eye drops. Use of eye drops with the preservative benzalkonium in them is a risk factor for the development of dry eye disease. Benzalkonium is a preservative commonly found in eye drops. It can disrupt the tear film, leading to an increased risk of dry eyes. Another risk factor is being a contact lens wearer. 50% of contact lens wearers will develop dry eye disease versus 20% of non-contact lens wearers. Contact lens wearers have a high percentage of meibomian gland dropout and my bomian gland dysfunction. Couple that with prolonged use of visual displays like staring at screens, air pollution, environmental allergens, all of these can further lead to dry eyes and contact lens wearers. If you've ever had refractive eye surgery, Lasix eye surgery, that puts you at risk for dry eye disease. And there is some thought that having demodicosis is a risk factor for dry eye disease. What are demodex? Have you ever heard of demodex mites? These are mites that naturally live on our eyelashes. They can actually impair the health of the meibomian gland. I have a whole video on these eyelash mites. They are thought to possibly be a risk factor for dry eye disease. And kind of related to that is the chronic inflammatory skin condition, rosacea. People think of rosacea as, you know, what it is, a skin disease with a flushing, blushing, redness, sensitivity to things that come in contact with the skin. But one thing people don't realize is that rosacea can and often does impact the eyes. People with rosacea are at an increased risk of meibomian gland dysfunction. So if you have rosacea, it's a good idea to check in with an eye doctor and have your eyes examined because Eye disease is quite common in people who have rosacea. So these are more well-established risk factors for dry eye disease and meibomian gland dysfunction, the most common type of dry eye disease. 
Um, whereas topical retinoids and retinols, they are less well established. Some observations here, to, here and there. It makes sense mechanistically. These ingredients target the sebaceous oil gland in the skin and the meibomian gland is a type of sebaceous gland. So it makes sense that it could potentially impact the health of these glands. However, as a dermatologist, I have to tell you, I've never appreciated any issue with prescription retinoids or over-the-counter retinols and the development of dry eye disease. But I don't treat dry eye disease. I'm not an ophthalmologist not an optometrist. So it could be something that we need more research on. I am also aware of the fact that historically at least, retinols applied in the eye were actually used to treat certain types of dry eye disease. So it's interesting, you know, in some dry eye conditions, perhaps it's beneficial. Um, again, this is not my area of expertise treating dry eyes, but I will point out that it has, retinols have been used to treat dry eye disease in the past at least. So definitely something that I think needs more research on because if it, if it contributes to dry eye disease, we need to be aware of that. We need more research to really establish if there is a true association with the use of topical retinoids or over-the-counter retinols and the development of meibomian gland dysfunction and dry eye disease. Because if so, then perhaps, you know, when prescribing a retinoid or advising a patient to pick up an over-the-counter retinol, we should also be counseling these patients to have their eyes examined regularly if this is in fact a true problem, which again, as it stands now, it's not something that I have ever appreciated as a dermatologist. Um, it's not, if you go searching the literature, you'll find a few reports here and there of acne patients who have dry eyes. But to what extent is actually the retinoid causing the dry eyes? Not established. All that to say, personally, I think it's very unlikely that using a topical retinol that you buy over the counter or a retinoid like tretinoin, tazeratine, and dampoline, I think it's very unlikely that using these to the face, at least, is going to result in dysfunction to the meibomian glands. Now, if you are using these ingredients on the eyelids, well, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. Uh, again, a lot of patients comfortably use topical retinoids long-term for the treatment of uh, photo damage around the eyes, as well as hyperpigmentation. And we really don't see this, but it may not be something that we are picking up because of how these patients are followed by dermatologists. So it may just be something that is kind of not being caught or picked up on. Dry eye disease is really, really common. Getting older is really, really common. And remember, that is the number one risk factor for dry eye disease. So how do you begin to tease this out? It's kind of challenging. More research needs to be done. I do caution that you not apply a retinol or retinoid anywhere near the eyelid margin, you know, by your lash line, for example. That, regardless of the meibomian gland dysfunction thing, is gonna be very irritating and can definitely cause a lot of eye irritation. I don't suggest doing that. You know, in my videos, I, I'm always pointing out how to apply these ingredients to put some Vaseline around the eyes to protect them. And I always get pushback from viewers. Well, I've been using retinoid around my eyes for wrinkles all the time. Sure, many people do, but it is very irritating there. So not everyone tolerates it there. And to what extent it could be contributing to dry eyes in other people, I simply don't know. The research is not there, but I respect the ophthalmologist and optometrist who are pointing this out. And I can totally understand why they might be advising their dry eye patients to avoid using topical retinols or retinoids around the eyes for that reason. I mean, it makes sense mechanistically. Maybe they see more cases of it than we do in dermatology because we don't treat dry eye disease. So again, it makes sense. I just haven't seen it. And there's not a lot in the medical literature really backing it up. And dry eye disease, again, is so common and as we get older, it becomes more common for reasons I explained, not to mention other risk factors. We're staring at screens a lot. Um, all, all these things play a role in the development of dry eye disease. So teasing out to what extent it's the retinol or retinoid, it's challenging. Anyways, let me know in the comments, those of you who use retinoids or retinols, you use them around your eyes. Have you found that your eyes are dry? You're having kind of a gritty sensation in your eyes. That would be, you know, maybe a symptom of dry eyes. Let me know. Have you seen an eye doctor and been told that you have dry eyes? Have you been advised to stop using these? Let us know in the comments, but I hope this video was informative to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.